the ones you help the most are the ones that love you and want to stay with you forever. And if you can help them and literally you're building that relationship, then you are helping them. If you can give them something of value for free, they're going to love you forever. You're listening to Toolbox of the Trades, brought to you by Service Titan, a podcast for top service professionals where we interview leaders for their best tips and tricks of the trades. Learn how industry trailblazers stay ahead of the competition and how you too can be at the forefront of an industry. Let's jump in. Hello, contractors, and welcome to the Toolbox for the Trades. Today's guest is YouTube sensation and owner of Texas Green Plumbing, Roger Wakefield. In 2018, Roger attended VidCon, a video marketing conference in San Diego. When he realized he was the only plumber there, he saw an opportunity and seized it. Today, Roger has over 50,000 subscribers who consider him YouTube's resident plumbing expert. I chatted with Roger about his rapid ascent to social media stardom and how it's influenced the work he does at Texas Green Plumbing. Roger's personal mission is to educate his customers and inspire the next generation of trades men and women entering the industry, which made this an incredibly engaging conversation. Enjoy. Roger Wakefield, welcome to the Toolbox for the Trades podcast. Thank you so much, Jackie. It is a pleasure to be here. I am so excited to talk to you. You have such an interesting story, but I figured why not start from the beginning? Why don't you tell the folks at home how you got started with plumbing? It's really funny. I have, when I was 16 and you know, back when I knew everything in the world, I actually, I quit high school. I quit the last part of my junior year and I was working in a restaurant and I was working with a real good friend of mine. And we were talking one night, it was really slow. We were working the drive through and we were talking and he said, you know, Roger, what, what are you going to do? I said, you know, what do you mean? I'm 16 years old. I'm managing a restaurant. Life is good. And he looks at me and he says, if you lose this job, who's going to hire a 16 year old restaurant manager? And I was like, wow, I, I, I don't know. And we got to talking and he talked about his father and his three older brothers that were all plumbers. And I was just really fascinated that they had all three got into it. They loved it. They had done well. They made good money. But it just it stuck with me. But one of the big things, now this is back in the 80s, actually 1980. So, you know, we were worried about robots taking over every job in the world. It's the next coming thing. And one of the things he said that night, he said, robots will never be able to do the job of a plumber. And later not much later, I probably got fired or quit. Don't remember which it was, <laughs> but not being in high school, I contacted one of his brothers. I got a job as a plumber, uh, as a helper. And that's where it started. It was luck of contacting the right guy, being told the right story. And it's really changed my life. But I did go back and graduate with my class because in Texas, you have to have a high school diploma or a GED to get your license. I knew that, and I had already decided, I think I want to get my license. Nice. So this was actually when you were an early teen, actually. Yes. Uh, I think I actually started when I was 17. I, I probably mm. probably fibbed a little bit on the application, maybe wrote the wrong year of birth or something. Uh, you know, we don't have to go into the details there. Um, well, it's, it's funny because <laughs> since I was 15, I could grow a beard. And I mean, 15 years old, a full blown, full facial hair beard. So I was going to the nightclubs, I was going dancing, I was doing all kinds of things that a 15 year old young man should not be doing. <laughs> but I got a job very easy. Well, you know, you still have great facial hair now. So obviously, Thank it you. served you well. It, it's, um, it's done good for me. So when I was doing some research on you, I saw that you've had a bunch of different jobs. You haven't only been a plumber. So can you talk to me a little bit about how you went from, you know, first learning about the plumbing trade when you were 17, becoming a helper, and then how, talk to me about those zigzags. Like, how did you ping pong around into where you are today, which is the owner of Texas Green Plumbing and um, the founder of a very successful YouTube channel, which is named after yourself? You know, one of the biggest things that I tell people all the time, and I believe this, this is my life's 
goal. It's, it's my navigation system. If you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. And that has always served me well. I, I started plumbing. I got out of high school. I, I plumbed. I got my license. And I ended up moving down to Austin. And I moved down to Austin working with a, a fire protection system company. And I fell in love with Austin. Loved it down there. When that job finished, I stayed down there, got a job plumbing, got in the bar business, became a bartender and a, and a bouncer. And when I came back home, I was, I was burnt out. I was tired of plumbing. I wanted to do something different. And I was managing a restaurant and my dad called one day and he says, hey, we're going to help your little sister buy a hair salon. I said, cool. He said, yeah, but she doesn't know anything about running a business, so we want you to run it. And I'm like, well, dad, I don't know anything about hair. He said, well, you can learn. I was like, okay. I became a cosmetologist and actually became a pretty good one. I, I, at the time that I was going to school, I actually thought that I wanted to be one of those on stage cosmetologists, you know, hair flying everywhere, lights, loud music. When I was going through cosmetology school and went to those shows, I thought that was so cool. Ended up opening my own hair salon later. And it was in a health club. So I had people coming in all the time saying, do you do massage? And finally, one day I thought, you know what? I'm going to go learn to do massage. So I started booking all my hair clients in the evenings and on weekends while I went to massage school. So I've, I've done a lot of different things, but I have fun. Uh, okay, so first off, I need to say uh, my very first job was a shampoo girl at a hair salon. So uh, fellow hair salon uh, professionals here. So it sounds like you were just kind of, I love what you said about if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So although at this point you had already knew, known about the plumbing trade, you were skilled in it, but you kept, you went from bar school, you went from being a bartender to being a cosmetologist, to being a massage therapist. What was kind of, what was that fire inside of you that was just kind of opening up these new doors and spearheading you to making these, uh, to creating new opportunities for yourself? So Jackie, I think what it was is I had worked for some bad plumbing companies. I worked for some plumbing companies that were all about the dollar. They didn't care about the customer. If it was a construction company, all they weren't worried about safety. They weren't worried about their people. All they were worried about was how fast can we get this in? And I just, I'm one of those people. Look, I'm a people person. And I guess that I was just, I was frustrated with plumbing. I was looking for something else. Being a bartender in Austin, I, I love people, love communicating with them. So getting into cosmetology, it was great. I mean, you build relationships with every customer you have. As a residential service plumber, you build relationships with every customer you have. And that has really fit me well because I really think that what we do, I think that I was looking for something better. And... After I kind of got through running everything, I got back into commercial plumbing, joined the union, stayed in there for years, and I walked out of a job, actually got fired, walked out, quit, argued. Uh, whatever, tomato, whatever, tomato. Yeah, whatever it came down to that day. But it was because the owner of the company was wanting to go into residential service. And I was in an executive meeting one day, and she said, we're going to market ourselves that we have the best customer service and the best trained plumbers. Now I was director of operations on the construction side. So I said, that's great. You know, what, what are we going to do? What kind of training? What are you going to do? I'm, I'm, she says, well, what do you mean? I said, well, if you're going to tell people we have the best trained plumbers and we have the best customer service there is, what are we going to do to train our people? And she just looks at me like I'm crazy. And she says, our plumbers know how to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Thank you. We're good. And that blew my mind. And I said, okay, what kind of training are we going to do for our plumbers to make sure they're the best trained plumbers? And she said, Roger, all our plumbers have licenses. I thought, okay, every plumber in the state of Texas has a license. And she says, yeah, but we're going to market it that way. And I go back, <laughs> go back to Jim Collins, good to great. I realized right then I'm in the wrong bus. I'm in the wrong seat. We're going the wrong direction. I'm not where I need to be. And it was just a couple of weeks later, I ended up walking out of there, not knowing what I was going to do. I called my wife on a Friday and said, look, bring my Jeep, because I had a company car. I said, bring my Jeep, come pick me up. And she said, this does not sound good. 
I said, baby, this sounds great. Come get me. And I went home that Friday, not knowing what I was going to do for sure. I'd already thought about opening a company. I'd already kind of started a little few things in place. Monday morning, I get a phone call at about eight o'clock from one of my customers. It says, Roger, our house was hit by lightning. I know you're busy today, but if you could come over here, it would be amazing. I said, I'm on the way. And I've pretty much been busy since then. That's incredible. Um, and I'm so happy you told that story. You know, as I've done this podcast over and over, Roger, some themes come up, right? One of those themes is that, you know, for example, sales. It's the one thing that brings in money to your business, but it's the one thing that, you know, we think is assumed. We don't consider it a skilled profession. And, and what you just said there is the same with customer service. Now, I've had the privilege of watching the trades from the outside and from the perspective of Service Titan. And I've had the privilege of getting to know customers who work on Service Titan and really, you know, go above and beyond in customer service. But growing up, what I always felt was that plumbers and a lot of tradesmen and women had this negative connotation, this negative stereotype about, you know, it's not going to be customer service. They're going to scam you. Can you talk a little bit about how important it was for you when you started your own business to really differentiate yourself? And what are some of the ways that you brought that customer service, that white glove experience that it seems like you were really intent on delivering when it came to doing residential service? Absolutely. Absolutely. When I first started my company, I don't even know that I saw that. I knew I wanted to, I did not just want to build a plumbing company. I wanted to build the best plumbing company. I wanted to do things that other plumbing companies weren't doing. And that was a big deal to me. I wanted, you know, I'd walked out of a c company that said, we're going to tell people we specialize in customer service and that we have the best trained plumbers. And I thought, I want to train my plumbers to be the best customer service people. I want to train them to be the best plumbers. So that's what I started looking at. And of course, in the beginning, it's just me. And, you know, I work on honing my own skills, trying to get better, trying to learn, listening to podcasts, what listening to YouTube, listening to things that I can learn. I start buying books. And I actually later, after I had enough people, we actually started putting our guys through the Sandler sales training program. The Sadler, that's sorry, the Sadler sales training? Sandler, S-A-N-D-L-E-R. Oh, gotcha. And Sandler, uh, and it's funny because I even asked the, the owner here in Dallas, and Sandler is a nationwide sales training program. It's a school, it's it's big training program. I asked the owner here in Dallas, I said, okay, so how many service, how, how many trades companies have you ever seen go through the Sandler program? He said, one other than you. I said, okay, how many residential service companies have you ever seen go through the training program? He said, you're the only one. And it, it just, it, it blew my mind that I'm here in Dallas. I'm not the only plumbing company in town. I'm not the only residential service company in town but I'm the only one sending my guys through a training program like this. And to me, it's not just sales is not what he's teaching. He's teaching communication. He's teaching the thing that we didn't learn in school. We learned how to read. We learned how to write. We didn't learn to listen. And he's teaching that. And that was the biggest aha moment for me is look, we're not doing sales. We are giving people great options. And they're based on our knowledge and our experience. And if we can come in and treat all of our customers that way, we're going to have a win-win situation every single time. I love that. And not to date you, but I know you said you started. You quit in. <laughs> I know you said 1980 was when you got involved in plumbing. So what year around was this that you, that you started Texas Green and you started investing in putting your guys through the Sandler training program? Well, here's the funny thing. I started plumbing in 1980. Got it. And I did not start Texas Green Plumbing till 2015. Oh, wow. I thought you were going to say like 2000, Roger. You're telling me that in 2015, when you started Texas Green Plumbing, you went to the sales training program and not one residential service company went through that national program. 
And Jackie, I went to the, I put our guys through the sales training program about two and a half, three years ago. Wow. And I still thought... nobody. So I, again, going back to my perspective here, you know, as someone who gets the privilege to speak with service Titan customers who are often very, very good at their jobs and, uh -huh. you know, create cr incredible service companies. I think I make assumptions about the trades in general as a result of seeing this small sample size. But in actuality, what you're saying here is that there's still so much opportunity to just better your best and go above and beyond. That's, that's I think, a really great takeaway and a really good lesson to highlight here. I want to pause for a second and also talk a little bit about you starting the business. I saw in one of your YouTube videos that you mentioned Michael Gerber. I'm a big fan of the E-Myth. I love it. So could you tell me a little bit about who your first mentor was and how you learned how to really form a business? Because opposed to the traditional plumbing technician trail, which is I'm a plumber, I get really good at it, I decide I'm going to start my own business, and then I learn how to make a business on the way, you kind of did this thing where you did a bunch of different things. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, who mentored you and, and how you really learned to set up a business. And you, you've already mentioned him. It's Michael Gerber. And the sad thing is, I mean, think about it, Jackie. I had never worked for a really good service plumbing company. I never worked for a company that taught you sales. I never worked for a company that walked in and, and taught you, look, you've got a plumbing license, but we want you to be a great plumber. So we want to train you to learn more about this, to do more about this. But whenever I was doing cosmetology, I'd have product knowledge companies come in. I'd have manufacturers come in. Look, we want to teach you why this is a great shampoo, a great conditioner, why this hair dryer is the best hair dryer to buy. And when I started my own company, I kept looking around like, wait, why aren't people training the plumbers? Like I got trained as a cosmetologist. I'd have people come in my massage school and say, look, we, we, wanna, we wanna sell y'all massage tables. Let us teach you why this is the best table. And it really struck me as funny that in the plumbing industry that is such a customer service industry, we're not training our people right. And I just started looking, what can I do to be better? What can I do to be different? And it goes down to, and look, I've had plumbers come in and plumbers leave. I don't have all my systems and processes in place. I tell people all the time, I'm not the systems process guy. I'm the 30,000 foot guy. I can look down and say, look, we need this. We need this. We need this. Don't ask me how to do it. Don't ask me how to put it together, but this is what we need. And it's funny because I was speaking to a group of realtors one day. I do a lot of speaking now, but I was speaking to a group of realtors. And when I was done, the owner of the company said, look, you, you can go now. I said, that's okay. I'll hang around if it's all right because he was going to present to him and he got up there and he talked. And one thing that he said, he said, look, I'm not a systems process guy, but when I hired her, it changed the way we did everything. And that's why now we are one of the number one real estate companies in Dallas. And I'm like, wow, you know what? I'm not a systems process guy. And I learned then I need to hire the right people to help me get to where I need to be. Michael Gerber talks a lot about that, you know, get the right people, do the right things and, and grow it to where you can be consistent. Like you said, look, I'm a great plumber. I've made these people a lot of money. I'm just going to walk out and open my own company and make myself a lot of money. Man, it's cost me a lot of money to learn what I didn't know. So I, I had no idea, by the way, the Texas screen started only a, a handful of years ago. And I don't mean that in a, I don't mean that in a negative way at all. I'm so, I'm, I, I rarely get the opportunity to speak to folks who are still only a few years into the, their first couple of years of operation. So I'm really excited. So you mentioned you're not a systems and processes guy. And I, I've talked about the importance of manuals. I've talked about the importance of systems and processes a lot. So when you realized you had to make those first few hires, how did you identify who's the first person I need to hire and how, because you don't have those systems and processes set up, how are you tracking their effectiveness? Just talk to me about that process. We started out looking for like an operations manager, for a service manager, looking for maybe plumbers that could also fill that role. Remember, I'm still a small company. Uh, I've got three trucks right now. I love so, it. Uh, I'm a very small company, but I understand that, and you know, we joined SGI, 
And if you can put that in, fine. If you don't, that, that's fine. I had to learn from people, from coaches, the systems and processes that I need to, to do. And needing to do them, learning to do them, and then implementing them are three completely separate stages. And I tell people that it's like drinking water out of a fire hose. All of a sudden, you wake up and you have all this information. There's a million things you need to do, and you need to do them all to be successful. Where do you start? And it's not always easy to know where to start. With the right coaches, mentors, leaders, other companies that you can talk to, it's great because you can say, look, I don't know what to do. And, you know, since joining SGI, there are two companies here in Dallas, very large companies. And I've actually talked to the owners of both of them. They're like, look, you ever have a problem, call me. You know, come in, sit down, let's talk. I'll tell you what I do. And I love that. Realizing I'm not a systems and process guy and that I need somebody that is, is huge. Finding that person is very difficult. We still have not found the right people. We've brought in a lot of plumbers that are like, hey, look, I know how to do all that. I'm the best guy. I'll set it up. I'll do this. I'll do that. And they come in. They want to come back here, actually in this room right here, and sit at a desk all day. And it's like, okay, wait. we we got guys out in the field that have questions. Oh, yeah, but you know what? I'm, I'm thinking about those systems and processes. It's like, wait a minute. This is not what I need. It sounds so, like you're very much, and I didn't mean to interrupt, but it sounds like you're very much in that stage right now where you're um... – you have to work on the systems and processes so you can grow, but as you're also in the process of growing, so you have fires to put out, needs to uh, satisfy. Um, how do you even balance all of that? It's really difficult, and go back to Michael Gerber. You cannot work on your business if you're working in your business. And if I'm out playing plumber, if I'm out doing a water sewer test, if I'm out doing a water heater inspection, Whatever it is I'm doing, if I'm out doing that, I'm not working on my business. Now I'm running two businesses. I'm running a full-time YouTube and social media and everything, which is great because that has taken away my pay-per-click. I don't do pay-per-click advertising anymore. Everything I do is social media and we're winning. I mean, it's, it's a good balance. It's coming out really, really well. But I even have to watch my time more now. We're still looking for the right systems and process person and or the right coach maybe to come in as an operations manager and say, look, I know the systems and processes. I can help train people. I can help get people in the right seat, on the right bus, go in the right direction. That's all we need. You hear that, folks? Roger's looking for someone. Oh, there you uh, go. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> I should also mention, we'll, we'll talk about your YouTube channel in a moment because it is very impressive. That is a tremendous, that is, the, the amount of videos that you have, the amount of care and consideration you put into your channel is fantastic. And as someone who is in the marketing space as well, I know how hard that is. You really are running two businesses. Yes. I want to talk a little bit about... Kind of going back, because one of my questions was actually, how often do you get in the field? And, and I love what you had just said there. You're like, you know, every time I'm, I'm out in the field, I'm not working on the business. So do you have a specific process that you use daily to say, these are the things I need to check off today? Or like, how do you organize your time when you have so much stuff going on? I try real hard to calendar. It, it doesn't work. <laughs> when you're in a residential service company, and, and I say that, it doesn't work when you're the chief bottle washer, head cook, server, everything. And don't get me wrong, I've got a great call center rep. She takes care of the dispatching, the booking, accounts payable, accounts receivable. Julie takes care of everything in the back office. So, I mean, I've got people in here. There's a lot of things that we do right. But my thing is, I do everything that I can do in here until somebody calls and says, hey, I need you. And that's why calendaring is real hard because if I get pulled out while I'm supposed to be shooting a video, then I have to rebook that time to shoot that video and what gives up. We started putting up videos two years ago and actually like two years and three months ago. We've done three a week, every single week since then. That's insane. That's I insane. We, I think we've missed one. In, in 26 months, 27 months. But 
when we started, we said, look, we're going to do this. So we have to be able to pivot, to turn, to shift and say, okay, wait, we were going to do this, but we'll do, do that three times tomorrow because today I have to go do this. Sometimes it works out well. I got caught out in the field yesterday. I grabbed Will, said, hey, grab a camera, let's go, and, and let's see what we can come up with. So sometimes it's beneficial. Yeah, because I met, well, that's one thing I wanted to say about the YouTube channel, you know, the fact that you're still attached to the field and the fact that you're in the process of growing your business makes you able to create more content. You're knee deep in your subject matter right now. So I can only imagine that um, you're just coming up with new ideas for videos all the time. I, I don't, I don't doubt that you have, that you want for source material, but yeah, I, I admire the heck out of you, Roger. I really have to say that's, this is really hard work and you're doing a great job at it. Um, well, I want to say something about that because it's not always too just the source material. It's not always just, Hey, we got a water heater call today. Let's go do a water heater. We are continuously doing research, content research. What are people looking for? If all I make are the videos that pop up every day because we got that call, I'm making the videos that are easy to make. I'm making the videos that are right there in front of me, the low hanging fruit. Hey, this was easy. Let's go make it. But if I really want to grow my YouTube channel, I need to do research and find out what are people actually looking for? What are people actually watching? What are people actually doing in their spare time? What are people grabbing and looking at when a commercial comes on and they're at home watching a TV show they can't fast forward through? I want to be there. And that's what I look for. I think that's great. And I should also say, I know we're, we're naturally going into YouTube, so I'll just let the conversation naturally yeah, we go can, We can go back wherever you want to go to. <laughs> um, no, but I know in your channel, you have a couple different audience segments. You have videos for homeowners, how to unclog their toilet, how to, cl how to clean their drain. You got videos for young men and women who, who maybe don't know where they want to go in life and you want to tell them plumbing's a great career. And you also have, you know, video content for plumbers who want to grow their business or are on the same journey as you. Let's talk about the homeowners for a second. Uh, I saw in one of your previous videos that some plumbers called you out and were like, why are you telling them how to do this? Blah, 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 blah. But I would love for you to answer how many of your customers at Texas Screen do you think watch your YouTube channel, your YouTube videos? <laughs> I think a lot of them because I, I, every time I go out to the house, they're like, oh, my God, man, I watched your video. It's so good. <laughs> That's and great. It, it is funny. I mean, I'll go up to houses and knock on doors because, you know, like I said, our systems and processes aren't all in place. So I may show up and they don't know who's coming because we don't have all our systems in place. But I show up, knock on the door, and they open the door like, oh, my God, it's you. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm a plumber. And I just, I, that's how I see it, right? I'm, I'm just a plumber. And they're like, oh, God, I, I want to take a selfie. It's like, it's like come on, do, do you ever take a selfie with any of your other plumbers? So it is, it's, it's kind of crazy, but I know that a lot of our customers do. We actually, you know, we send out emails saying, look, there's things that y'all can do yourself. And I mean, think about your best customers. Think about your best customers, the tradespeople that you deal with. The ones you help the most are the ones that love you and want to stay with you forever. And if you can help them and literally you're building that relationship, then you are helping them. If you can give them something of value for free, they're going to love you forever. Yeah. And to me, that, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And I can only imagine that having that transparency in your YouTube channel also helps build trust with these homeowners that are calling you for the first time, going back to that customer service, going back to what we had said about, you know, some of the negative stereotypes that unfortunately follow a lot of hardworking men and women in the trades. It's, I do a lot of networking and you know, you've, you've heard the old adage, people buy from people they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a little bit different. People buy from people they know, love, trust, and they're connected to. Now, if I can get people to watch my videos, we have a connection. And you can say, well, you know, just because they watch your video doesn't mean they're connected to you. Maybe not. But I've got calls from the four corners of the United States, North Carolina, Phoenix. It doesn't matter. I get calls from around the country saying, I'd like to talk to Roger. I've got a plumbing problem. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't get to talk to everybody, but I know people are connecting. 
and I know we're building that relationship and I know we are building that trust because they believe in me and they'll call and say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not your customer. I want you to understand that I'm a thousand miles away, but I've got a question. If you were getting this water heater, what would you do? And I love spending the time and getting to talk to them. I love that. And you know, that education, uh, the more education you give your customers, the more they trust you, the more that they feel safe and in investing in you. And you know, you mentioned it before about the hair thing, but you know, I have a lot of hair myself. <laughs> I can tell you about all different types of hair products. I will spend hundreds of dollars on my hair every, every year. But when it comes to like plumbing and HVAC and electrical, I'm like, I don't know anything about this. I, just, just fix it and just don't charge me too much. But mm -hmm. it's so true. The more education you give, the more people are willing to give you their hard earned dollars and the more they're willing to do business with you. So it, I love Jack, it. Jackie, think about what you just said. You'll spend hundreds of dollars on your hair products. If you did not know a good hair product from a bad product, if nobody ever took the time to train you, to educate you, you said, look, I was a shampoo tech man. You knew shampoos, you knew conditioners, you knew rinses, you knew colors, you knew a lot of things that a lot of people don't know. But now that you do know, I'm assuming you haven't done hair for a while now. I have not, but I still, it still holds a very dear place in my heart. And I'm assuming you still buy high-end products because you understand the value of them. Yes, I do. If a plumber, and I say a plumber, if any residential service trades person takes the time to educate their customer, and teach them not just what they're doing, but why they're doing it. What are the benefits of doing it this way? You teach them that you've got a customer for life because you have now, you're not just their plumber. You're not just their roofer, their electrician, their landscaper, their HVAC guy. You are their trusted advisor. You have built a relationship with them. That's huge. I agree. I'm going to go, I want to go into your YouTube journey in a second, but before I do, I really want to talk about specialization because, you know, in your video, you talk about how Texas Green specializes in slab leaks and leak detection. I'm not a plumber. So what made you choose that specialization and how would you recommend that other plumbers look for specialization as they open their own business? Here in the Dallas area, we have a lot of slab leaks and there were a few companies that are really good at locating slab leaks. And I was calling them out. And then I'm noticing they're on other jobs fixing slab leaks and things like that. And I have nothing wrong, but I don't want to call a company out to find something for me. And then they end up giving them a price for it and, and do the repair cheaper. It's like, okay, wait, this, this isn't working right. But I also knew that there were plumbing companies out there not doing it right. They were just, hey, we think it's over here. Let's jackhammer a hole in the floor and go to town. So I started doing research on equipment. I started doing research on, on different equipment and products and systems and ways to do it and whatnot. And then I started looking at it, okay, as a plumber, what would be the logical step-by-step-by-step -step -step solution to finding this problem? And luckily I've done, I've done everything from residential, commercial, new construction service, non-union, union. union. I, I've seen just about every kind of plumbing job there is. So to be able to walk, walk through all the steps of how would I isolate a leak? How would I find it? And then I started investing in equipment and investing in even better equipment. And I realized that I, if, again, if I'm going to do it and if I want to be the best, I want to use the best equipment. Now I'm actually in the process of trying to design some equipment because I have an idea that I think is better than the equipment out there and I'm trying to get it all built. That's incredible. Talk about ingenuity. I mean, geez, you really <laughs> you don't have. <laughs> if you can't find what you want, build it. <laughs> Man, you don't really, you don't seem like a very fearful person to me, Roger. No, not really. So you decided to specialize in slab leaks and detection because it sounded like, you know, you knew some guys who were pretty good at it. You didn't want to send them on a job. You wanted to be the one who went on that job and was able to do it the best way you possibly could and also get that business. And you found particularly that since slab leaks are such an issue in Dallas, you've been able to really be known as not just Roger Wakefield, the extra plumber on YouTube, but also Roger Wakefield. He's really good at slab leaks. 
Talk to me a little bit too about your feelings towards reusing rainwater and water conservation, because you, you said something about it in one of your videos, and, and I, I really want to touch upon it because it's, it's something that's important to me too. Um, and I'd love to know your message about how important it is for plumbers to, to be mindful of being green as they you know, go into the 21st century. I love that. And here's my big deal about it. And here's where it all started for me. Plumbers in Texas have to take continuing education. We've got to take six hours every year. And one of the first years, so this is back in the 90s, you know, right around when you were born. <laughs> uh, back in the 90s, I, I'd gone into continuing education. I think it was 95, 96. And I'm, I'm in there, I'm sitting in the class and the instructor's up front and he's talking. And I guess this is before the class got started and he's talking, but he's talking about water, rainwater, things like that. And he looked at us, he said, you know, y'all realize that our grandkids or, or our great grandkids are not going to have access to water the way we do. We can walk up to a tap anytime, anywhere, turn it on, and there's water. It's not going to be that way in the future because the way the population is growing, look, we've got the same amount of water we had 100,000 years ago. It is what it is. So what are we going to do? And I was just listening to him and I was like, wow. They're not going to have access to water. That just, it struck me as crazy. And then I started doing research on it. And I'm one of these people, if, if I think you're BSing me, I, I'm going to prove it, good, bad, or ugly. And what I did is I, I started doing research. And it's like, wow, look at the, the population is going to double. The population is going to double. It's going to double. And I just started looking at what, what can we do? And I found different organizations. I'd actually joined Green Plumbers USA at one point out of California. And they are, were originated in Australia and doing research on it. It was because the people over there, they were running out of water. They were in a continuous drought. And what they decided was, look, who goes in people's houses more than anybody else to work on the plumbing? Plumbers. Plumbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a logical, you know, it's, it's, it's an easy one. So they said, what if we train our plumbers to teach people about water conservation, to teach them about high efficiency toilets, to teach them about low flow aerators, low flow shower heads, rainwater harvesting. What if we teach plumbers to become that go-to expert, that trusted advisor to walk in and say, look, I can help you save a lot of water. And they said at the time, I think they were saying the average plumber in Australia walked in five houses a day. And they said, look, we can reach millions and millions of people in a short time if we'll take time to train the plumbers. And I thought that was great. So I did. I joined Green Plumbers USA here in the United States, went through their training program. I really liked their training. A lot of it is rainwater harvesting, gray water reclamation. And it's something that I believe in. I've actually got a design in my head for an off the grid house that uses rainwater, uses gray water reclamation and solar panels and windmill to be completely unplugged. And I think it's things that like things like that are going to be very prevalent in the future. And most people don't worry about water right now because the cost of it, it's not overly expensive. It's not cheap, but it's not bad, but it's something that once the price starts coming up because we're rationing it, or we're, we're restricting water, you can't water your yard this week or this month or whatever. And here in Texas, we've done it. In California, they've done it. Yeah. So when we get to that point and the price of water starts going up because that's the only next thing to do, I'm licensed in Texas to do rainwater harvesting. And it's because I see that one day there's going to be a need for it. Now, whether it's in my lifetime or not, it's going to come. We're going to have to have to reach out to that because we shorten the evapotranspiration cycle to where now we're taking it right out of the sky and using it instead of waiting for it to hit the ground, get absorbed, evaporate, come back up, end up in a, a body of water to where we can filter it, clean it, and get it sent out to people. Yeah, I absolutely love that, by the way. I'm really passionate about it too, being in California, you know, obviously we experience a lot of drought and I think it is so crucial for, you know, and I think it's a really great opportunity for our folks in the trades who really touch all of our utilities, all of the things that make our world 
in our country a modern living country. And just thinking of ways to optimize the home, to conserve energy, to conserve water, and to just be green and be a little bit nicer to our planet. Uh, so thank you for answering that. I, I kind of geeked thank out you. when I found, I found that out. Um, I really hope also that that's an idea for a playlist on your channel when you eventually do build your off the grid home, because I know a lot of people will be interested in that. Uh, and, and something you asked about a while ago, what could plumbers specialize in? Yeah. Well, sl slab leaks and leak detection are great. Just solar water heaters. Can you imagine a company that says, look, we only do solar water heaters. We'll come in, we'll, we'll rip yours out, we'll retrofit your house, we'll do this, we'll do that. That's a whole business right there. And imagine how many companies in a city the size of Dallas, Houston, L.A., what, what part of California are you in? I'm in L.A. Okay, there you go. I mean, what, 28 million people, I think? Oh, uh, yeah, give or take. Yep. Give or take. Kind of well, that's the whole area. So, so SoCal. There you yeah. go, 28 million people. Yeah, I know. Um, it's crazy. How many solar water heaters could you sell a year? <laughs> to 28 million people as a customer base, because there's not a whole lot of people doing it. Yeah. I know, guys, there's opportunity. opportunity. Take it. I know. I mean, I my like joke that I keep saying to my friends is, man, by the end of me doing this podcast, I'm just gonna become a tradeswoman <laughs> and uh, make, you know, become a comfort advisor, maybe a green comfort advisor. That'd be really cool. Absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit about your YouTube journey journey because again, you know, when you YouTube came out when I was in high school and it was filled with prank videos, vloggers, and makeup tutorials. And even today, a lot of people would say, YouTube's crowded. It's like, whatever. It's just like stupid clips. How did you get started? What would you say to the naysayers? And, uh, you know, leave no stone unturned here because I think this is fascinating. Well, well, let me start with the naysayers, the people that say it won't work. Keep thinking that. I love it. <laughs> Y'all make it easy for me. <laughs> you know, the, the truth is, and I, I, I tell my story often, two years, three months ago, actually two years, four months ago, because March the 1st, 2018, I was in San Diego, social media marketing world. And I was there. I literally went to learn social media. I got tired of getting ripped off by marketing companies. I'm sure you talk to a lot of people in the trades and we're easy pickings. We know nothing about websites, marketing, advertising, nothing. So when somebody comes in and says, Hey, you want to be on page one? You say, yes. Like just write me a big check. Okay. <laughs> There you go. And all of a sudden your phone stops ringing. And it's like, okay, what did y'all do? Oh, we completely rebuilt your website. It's going to be magic. It'll take six months for things to pick back up. And it's like, wait, whoa, stop. Take me back to what I had. And I've seen it time and time again. So I literally went to social media marketing world thinking that I'm going to walk in and I'm going to learn to do better posts on Facebook, maybe how to share pictures better, how to do things to, to help grow my little plumbing company on Facebook, build engagement. And it's funny because I, I showed up really early. Uh, I'm an early riser. I was awake at three o'clock this morning. So it's just me. I wake up and it's like my mind starts running. But I... Uh, I got up, I went and ate breakfast. I show up at registration an hour early, but the doors are open. So I walk in, I'm like, hey, look, I'm Roger, I'm here. Can I go ahead and register? And they said, yeah, sure, come on down. So you know, I hand her my driver's license and the lady looks at me and gets me all signed up and hands me my lanyard. She says, okay, Roger, I'm gonna find some people for you to hang out with. She said, you're a plumber. Ooh, there's no plumbers here. <laughs> what other kind of people would you hang out with? I said, you know what, electricians, roofers, fence builders, HVAC techs, uh, man, residential trades people. Yeah. And man, she's going at it. <laughs> and she's she mimicking like, scrolling, by the way, for anyone who's just listening to the audio. She, yeah, 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 she's scrolling through her list. <laughs> and she looks up and this girl's got tears in her eyes and she looks at me and she says, Roger, there's nobody here like you. <laughs> And I literally smiled ear to ear. And why I did, I don't know. But I mean, I was just like, wow. And she looked at me and she says, I don't know who you're going to hang out with. <laughs> and my smile got even bigger. I said, look, don't you worry about me. I'm good. Yeah. And I, I realized right then I have an opportunity 
that I don't think a lot of residential service people see. And, you know, they hand you a book and, and tell you about the schedule. So I go sit down at a table and I'm going through the book. I am charting my next three days. What am I going to learn? Who am I going to learn it from? How am I going to learn it? And I literally, uh, I'm headed to one session that I was going to. And I walk by a room and it's the first day there, there are workshops. So it's a 90 minute class, not a 45 minute session. And I walk by this class and I look and it's the second one. So I'd already been to one. I'm headed to another one. And I look at this board and it says how to get in front of your customers using video. And I'm thinking, okay, you video plumbing jobs. Yeah, there you go. That's great. And I was headed to another one, but I turned and I walked in, I sat down, I go down the front row because I'm one of those guys. I went, and, and every time you see me down here, I'm looking at your picture, your, your video, mm -hmm. but I'm on the front row because I'm laser focused. I'm ADD. So if something moves, remember I used to do security. If yeah. something moves, I've got to know what it is, mm -hmm. where, where are the dangers coming from? But I'm on the front row and I'm dead focused. And one of the first things he says is YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. And I'm sitting here and I'm taking notes and I looked at him and I thought, this guy's stupid. <laughs> YouTube is just where I keep my videos for that. We do like Facebook ads. Cause we had, we had done three or four videos and it's like, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. Yeah. And he went on for the next 90 minutes to explain that YouTube really is the second largest search engine in the world and that you can make videos and you can put them in there. And if you do it right, they're searchable, they're findable. And I'm sitting here thinking, wait, I am paying for people to search and find me on Google, the largest search engine in the world. But the second largest search engine in the world is paying people to put videos on there and get found. And it, it was like the 4th of July fireworks going off in my head. I'm like, okay, there's something here. And again, I go back to the girl earlier that morning, Roger, there's nobody here like you. And I'm literally sitting in this session workshop and it clicks. I mean, just all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, I can change the world right here. And how I saw it, how I felt it, how God talked to me, whatever happened, happened. I'm just like, wow. So for the next, the rest of that day and the next two days, I mean, I am literally sucking it up and I'm, I'm looking at it a way I hadn't even thought about it before. And I'll, I'll tell you, Jackie, a story I normally don't tell a lot of people. The second day I'm in a session and my wife calls and she's blowing up my phone. I keep, I keep hitting do not disturb. In between sessions, I walk out and I call her and she says, look, I'm just going to let you know we're probably not going to be in business when you get back. The phones have stopped ringing. We've called the marketing company. They're not even answering anymore. Oof. It's, and I'm like, Julie, look, we're going to make it. I'm here trying to learn. You tell me, Hey, you're in San Diego. Have fun. Enjoy your day. It not really helping a lot with me trying to learn. Julie, we're going to make it. I said, look, there, there's accounts payable out there. Accounts receivable out there. Make some phone calls. And I had to leave early Friday because I do a radio show or was doing a radio show in Dallas on Saturday mornings. So I flew back home Friday afternoon, left early. I am literally on the plane. There's nobody in the seat next to me. I've got both trays folded down. I've got a notepad, an iPad. And I mean, I am going through every single note I've taken for the last two and a half days. I get up Saturday morning, go to the radio show, do it, come back up to the office and keep going through my notes all day. The Dang. next morning, Julie and I get up and go to church. I take her home, drop her off. I come back to the office and I'm going through my notes again. Monday morning when, when Julie and Will walked in, I said, I want y'all to know we're changing the way we do everything. And we're starting right now. And that was the first or second of March, probably March 4th or 5th, really. The first week of April, we started putting up YouTube videos and we hadn't slowed down. That's incredible. And this, by the way, is 2018. So, I mean, the last couple of months feel like a millennia, but that's only, yeah. only yeah. two years ago. Yeah. Um, and how many subscribers do you have right now on your YouTube channel? Uh, 40, almost 46,000. 
46,000 people. It is 46,000 unique accounts who get flagged whenever you post a new video. Okay. I'm, I'm going to correct you because of the way you Please. worded that. Please. It's 46,000 subscribers, but doing my YouTube analytics a while ago, I have almost 300,000 unique viewers every month. Now, the 46 you're talking about, yes, they get a notification, hey, Roger just released a video. If they ring the bell, there's certain things. 46,000 people in two years, and, and really even less than that, because at the end of 2018, I only had uh, 350 subscribers. So I, did, I didn't even start growing then, really. 2019 is when I started growing now. I mean, we're nailing it. So it's, it's really, really good. And say that again, you said 300,000 unique. Almost 300,000 unique viewers in the last 28 days. That's insane. Like so, when you think about the impressions that you've made, that's insane. And the impressions you made, I, and I love that. And I love the way you put it because part of my favorite thing about YouTube is the engagement, engaging with people that watch my videos, engaging with people that reach out and say, Hey, you've changed my life because my parents were trying to force me to go to college and I don't want to. And now I've been plumbing for a year and a half and oh my God, I love this. And we talk about plumbing, but I mean, I have electricians, HVAC techs, roof. I have so many different people watch me and say, Roger, what you're teaching goes for any trade. I'm like, yeah, yeah I, I understand that. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, but you always say plumbing. I'm a plumber. But it does. It, I mean, think about the things you said earlier. I'm trying to help people get into plumbing. I'm trying to help people get into the trades. I'm trying to help people be a better plumber. I'm trying to help them be a better tradesperson. It changes people's lives. And when you do that and you get the feedback that you get, it touches you. It, it's really a neat, neat feeling. I love that. And also, I, I know you're still, you know, you're at three trucks now, but I... I would not be surprised if somewhere down the line, you get a technician who comes to you and says, I've been watching your videos on YouTube for two years and I want to work for you. I already get them. Uh, I get calls from around the country saying, are you hiring? I, I, will, I will pack up and, and leave now. And I think that even goes back to the, you know, the experience you had when you first started in the trade, working for not that great companies, working for companies that didn't really prioritize customer service or prioritize sales. And when technicians see that businesses are doing really cool and forward thinking things, that's the one they want to work for because, you know, there's a labor shortage, you know, a plumber, an HVAC tech, an electrician, they can get a job. They're, they're going to have no problem getting a job. So they have their pick of the litter. And when they're looking to pick, they're going to look for the company that's going to give them the most. And that not, that doesn't just boil down to a paycheck. So, I mean, I know this is really great and get, like really great content, not just for your customers, but also for your prospective hires. And the way I see it, this makes sense. And I also, the reason I wanted to kind of cut back on that timeline is, I don't know if I told you, but I did, I, I've done some comedy in the past and, you know, YouTube, people think it's so, so uh, crowded. Right. Uh, people think it's so crowded, but in just 2018, you started a channel, you had about 300 subscribers, which still is no that's still something to, that's still something to be proud of. And look at where you are now. Like, it's, just work at it, guys. I mean, take Roger's example and just, you know, do it. I love I, I it. I tell people all the time. Uh, matter of fact, I met a guy at one of these social media marketing events, Fencer, fencing company. And I don't know if y'all have any fencing companies that, that work with Service Titan, but I mean, look, it's a residential service. And... He was actually at the first social media marketing world I was at. He just, he didn't know about me. I don't guess the girl knew what fencing was or whatever. Anyway, didn't connect us. But the next year, I mean, literally people that knew me because I, I tend to meet a lot of people were like, hey, you need to meet the guy in orange. So there's a guy named Joe Everest. And we started working with him on his YouTube channel two months ago, three months ago. Mm -hmm. He was getting like 40,000 views a day off what we what we taught him, what we showed him, what we started doing. And I mean, literally, he's like, Roger, look, I want to be you in fencing. You're the expert plumber. I want to be the expert fencing guy. So when you go look up the fence expert, you find Joe. But it's like, if you're willing to do it, if you're willing to take the time to learn a little bit, 
pay a little bit, what, what, however you want to look at it. I've paid for coaches. I've ended up hiring everybody in, inside now. So we do everything ourselves, but I'm still always learning just like me as a plumber. I still want to learn. I still want to grow. I still want to educate myself because that just keeps me going. That you actually just answered my next follow-up question, which which was how important is it to keep learning as you develop your skills as a plumber and also as a business owner. You know, I I think the lesson here too, because there's I'm sure there are some owners listening, and I'm sure there's some technicians listening, and who are like, I have no interest in getting on video. But I think the thing I really want to hammer home is, you know, you said at the beginning of this of this recording, you're a people person. You're in you like communicating with people, you like being around people. YouTube is a natural medium for you. So to anyone listening who's hearing the way that you really took a channel that wasn't really being used in the trades, you kind of found your own niche. So I would encourage folks listening to really think about their strengths and how they can find some unique channels that they can apply there, right? The neat thing is, and I call it R&D, and I know you're thinking research and development. I'm thinking rip off and duplicate. That's (laughs) what I do. Okay, redo it. I redo it. Anybody doing YouTube is just, I mean, we're doing TV shows. We're doing stories. We're doing things that people have been doing for years. We've just got a different format or platform to do it on. When I walked in that social media marketing event 27, 28 months ago, if you'd have told me before I walked in, Roger, when you get out of here, you're going to start doing YouTube and man, you're going to be known nationwide as a plumber and yada, yada, yada. I'd have been like, you're smoking crack. (laughs) I'd have been like, there is no way I'm going to, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. That's not my thing. I'll leave that to other people. And you talk about some people not wanting to get in front of a camera. One of the channels that's really doing better at plumbing than anybody else, the guy never gets in front of the camera. Everything's animated and drawn and screen and stuff like that. There's a lot of information out there and a lot of different ways to get it. Now, I love being in front of the camera. I understand that I have a way to connect with people. And for somebody who loves helping people and loves people, it's a great way to do it. I can help people from around the world and never leave Richardson, Texas. I love that. We're coming up at an hour now. So I want to, I have a couple final questions for you. But before I go to uh, my rapid fire questions, (laughs) I want to ask you about, you know, what are your plans for Texas Green Plumbing and what are your next steps? It's funny because when we started doing really well at YouTube, I'm going to say six or eight months ago, we started looking at the possibility of selling Texas Green Plumbing. And we had actually reached out to some HVAC companies around, some plumbing companies around. And, you know, of course, everybody's like, oh, yeah, we'll buy it. Here's $5. And it's like, yeah, you know, that's not quite where we were at. And, and everybody wants to lowball you, and I understand that. But through that course, we started doing things better, and, and our numbers started looking better. And it's like, you know what? We're doing pretty good at this. And whenever I first started Texas Green Plumbing five years ago, the reason I named it Texas is Texas is a big state. Green, water conservation. It has to do with my logo over my shoulder, that foot I actually designed. And it's all about sustainability, your carbon footprint and all that. And I still think, like I said, rainwater harvesting, gray water reclamation is all going to be big in the future. So that has everything to do with my logo, my name and everything. But five years ago, I saw the plan of going from Dallas into Fort Worth, then going down to Austin and San Antonio, and then going to Houston and having, you know, five locations or or warehouses to work out of, still run everything from here, centrally dispatched. It's a statewide plumbing company. And I still want to do that. I still need to get the right people in and, and find ways to make all that happen. But we're still looking at that opportunity. The more we grow on YouTube, the the bigger we grow here. You know, the, the one thing that we hadn't really talked about is, I quit doing pay-per-click on Google, which I love Google. They made my phone ring and Google owns YouTube. But now YouTube pays me to make videos that make my phone ring. And I'm not buying ads on Google, at least not right now. I'm fixing to start experimenting with that again. But the opportunities are great. We've done so well on YouTube that 
Google actually hired a company to video us and do a video on Texas Green Plumbing and how we've done it, how we've grown with YouTube. And it actually just got released a week or two ago. And I mean, when Google does a story on you about what you're doing on YouTube, you're doing something right. And it's all about Texas Green Plumbing. So it's, it's pretty cool. And I think the opportunities are amazing. I agree with you. And I wish you the best in expanding to, to throughout that great state of Texas. I drove through it once. It took forever. So I know you got a lot of land to cover. Yes, I do. Uh, before I go into my rapid fire questions, which this season I'm ending all of my, my episodes with, can you tell the folks who are listening where they can find you? Best thing to do, and I, I love this because if y'all are driving down the road, number one, pull over real quick. Uh, <laughs> open your phone, open your YouTube app, and press the search bar and just put in plumbing. If you've never put in plumbing or never searched plumbing or anything like that, you're going to be surprised at what you find. And then go back and remember what I was told two years, eight months ago, four months ago, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. And on that first page, I own it. And it's because of what we're doing. So search plumbing. My name is Roger Wakefield and that's what my channel is. And if you want to see the things I do, or you want to rip off and duplicate me, man, go to it. I want everybody to understand this is an amazing platform. And it's a great way to get your information out there and have fun. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I do lives on LinkedIn twice a week, Monday afternoons, four o'clock central standard time. I go live on YouTube and man, we talk all about plumbing. I love it. I love it. Um, all right. Ready for some rapid fire questions? Now, wait, I'm looking at my sheet. You didn't give me any rapid fire questions. I know that's because I like to put people on the spot when we do it. Ready? Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I, yeah I'm, I'm ready. I'm playing. Look, I'm, uh, not, like you said, I'm not afraid of anything. All right. How do you take your coffee? I don't drink coffee. I drink unsweet iced tea with extra lemon. Oh, I love it. If you could have dinner with one person dead or alive, who would it be? Mm, man, my grandfather. Love it. What's the number one thing you're trying to learn more about right now? Leadership. If money weren't an object, so if you had unlimited resources, what's the first thing you would do? Help as many people as I could. What's the number one thing every contractor must do to run a successful business? Create successful habits and stick with them. You killed it. You killed the, the, the lightning round. Uh, so thank you, Roger. Thank you so much for being a guest on Toolbox for the Trades. Jackie, this has been so much fun. Ever wonder how much your business is worth? So many owners ask that question and have no idea where to turn for an answer. In just a few clicks, Service Titan's new Service Business Valuation Calculator can give you an easy and free estimate of the current value of your business. Whether you're thinking about selling your company or looking to track growth, check it out now. Visit servicetitan.com slash value. Again, that's servicetitan.com slash value. See how much your business is worth today. Want to network with fellow service entrepreneurs and former guests of this podcast? Join our private Facebook group, Toolbox for the Trades, to get immediate access to the best tips, tricks, and tactics from fellow service entrepreneurs. Visit facebook.com slash group slash toolbox for the trades, or click the link in our show notes to join. See you online.